Good evening, everyone. We welcome you to our first parent evening of the year, a virtual parents evening, unfortunately, due to the COVID pandemic hitting us again. But we'd like to welcome each and every one of you to our parents, our new parents virtual evening. There's a whole lot of information that's going to be downloaded to you through this video and you're welcome to replay it and go through it. We obviously have a lot more information that we would have given you had we been live and during the course of the term as and when you need information. So we'll try to feed that information through to you, either through other meetings, videos or through a, a written letter. But nonetheless, welcome. Welcome to our Curo Hillcrest family, our new parents. And we are so excited to have your children come and join us this year. I hope they're excited too. I understand that some of them might be nervous because coming from other schools, coming from different environments, they might be a bit concerned about the pandemic and our protocols and so on and so forth. Please be assured that we are very, very pedantic about the protocols that we run at our school. And so when your children join us on Wednesday morning, please don't drop them off at 7.25 when we start school, but please drop them off a little bit before that because obviously there's a screening process and there's questions they need to answer and obviously there's areas that we put them into so that they obviously are safe. We are looking after your children. Their health is of paramount importance to us as with our health as teachers and staff uh, who are on this campus. And so again, please don't be concerned but have faith in the system. We've done this before and obviously we will continue to do this and keep everybody safe. So again, a big welcome to our Kira family. There's a few little bits of information that I'm going to give you and then we're going to pass on to, to other teachers and, and later on uh, there's some of our, our learners and, and a parent from last year's grade 8 group that are going to be chatting with you and I hope you look forward to that. The first thing is our, our channels of communication. So you're coming from different schools, we want to just get you all on the same page. If you have a general uh, uh, query or comment that needs to be passed, your child is going to be placed into a connect class. Further information will be given on this, but every child will be given a Connect teacher and it is that teacher that will be your first port of call. So if there's anything that worries you from a, a social point of view to uh, any concern, in actual fact, that worries you um, that's of a general nature, you first will contact the Connect teacher. The Connect teacher then moves to the respective grade heads. So may, most of you are obviously in grade eight and they'll move to the grade eight heads um, and from the grade heads, They'll go to our deputy head, who's Mrs. Dennis, and that'll feed through to myself if that needs to get taken that far. So please, your Connect teacher will always be your first port of call. If your, your, your problems are of an academic nature, then again, they'll go. your first port of call will be your, your child's respective subject teacher, where there's a problem. That will then get fed through to the subject head, who will feed through to our academic head. Again, that's Mrs. Dennis, who will then feed that information through to me. On a sporting front, You'll go through, through the, the, the manager of your team, or if it's cultural, the manager of the activity, who will then go to the head of that specific activity, who will then go through to the head of either sport or cultural, who will then chat with me. So please, just if I can ask you, don't send all your queries straight to the head of culture or through to myself, but there's a channel, and obviously we'll deal, deal with things as and when they, they, they come through. Further to that, our school day, it starts at 7.25 every day of the week, Monday through Friday. Your child is not to arrive at 7.25, please. There's screening that takes place. There's consequences if your child does not arrive and is inside the school gate by 7.25 in the morning. So please, if we can ask you at the latest to bring your children in by about 7.15, better still, a lot of parents start dropping children off at 7 o'clock with the traffic. Obviously, it's not quite so bad at that time of the day. But 7.25 is our school, start of our school day. Further to that, on, a, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, we finish at 2.45 um, and on a Friday at 2.15. Uh, those are our finishing times on those respective days. And again, please would you come, especially under this COVID time, and collect your children if they're not doing an extramural activity straight after school starts. Yes, there might be a bit of a traffic jam, and so you might want to stagger that, but at the end of the day, we expect all our children to be off of our property by 3 p.m. because we can't have children hanging around under these COVID times when we need to have somebody on duty ensuring that social distancing takes place. So unless your child is involved in an extramural activity, and at this stage we will be continuing with our extramural program, both sporting and cultural, 
Obviously, from a sporting front, there will be certain restrictions in place with regard to practices. But nonetheless, we will be running those activities. Your children need to please be taken from the school by 3 p.m. unless they're involved in extramurals or an extra lesson. Thank you. So moving on to our grade heads. We have a teacher in charge of every one of our grades, as I've mentioned earlier. But in the grade 8 group, we have two te teachers in charge because obviously every one of them are new and they need a little bit more attention. And so those teachers are Mrs. Hannah Fletcher and Mrs. Michelle Krubler. Our grade 9 grade head is Mrs. Christelle Ulberholzer. Grade 10 is Mr. Derek Fletcher. Grade 11 is Mr. Pietri Mostert. And grade 12 is Mrs. Jackie Gaines. The information will be appearing on screen and please feel free to contact them should you need any help in any different areas. We have a, a, a group at the school, a group of parents called the Curro Parent Liaison Group and they are looking for assistance. And so for those of you who are able to spare a little bit of time or your expertise in different areas, we really ask that you would get yourself involved in this group. There's different portfolios that they have that will be appearing on screen. And if you are interested or able to contribute in any one of those areas, or if you just are able to contribute and give of your time, please, if we could ask that you would liaise with this group and their contact information will be sent through to you in a different uh, letter. In our first newsletter, we'll have the information sent through to you and you're able to contact them. But they are desperate for help. They would love to have you involved and we would love you to, to have you involved. Uh, a, a close network between the school and its parent body is a very healthy one. And so please, we do ask that you would involve yourself in that. My last point is perhaps a little contentious but it's the responsibility of parents. And as I've mentioned earlier, as most of you have come up from primary school, perhaps moving into high school, you're not quite used to the fact that you might not be so hands-on with your children. Remember that what you're doing now is you're handing your children over and they've got five years in which they need to grow from being quite reliant on you perhaps as parents to being non-reliant on you except possibly for a financial point of view once they leave, leave, leave school because they're going to be out at varsity. And so this is a process that needs to take place and so from a parent point of view there's a little bit of advice that I'd like to pass on to you please and if you could take my advice I'd really appreciate it. First of all you need to be your child's number one supporter. They need to know that you're in, the, you're in their corner, you've got their back, Perhaps not everything that you, they say might be quite believable or the whole truth, but nonetheless, you need, they need to know that you are their number one supporter. And so you need to be right behind them and supporting them, helping them and giving them, within reason, boundaries within which they need to work. Two, you need to guide and direct them, which is part of the boundaries that I spoke about. But at the same time, guiding and directing does not mean you would have to open their homework diary and that you would be the one to stand over their shoulder and make sure they did their work. You need to check up on them. They are, after all, teenagers. So you do need to check up on them. But at the same time, I'm not saying take your hands off altogether and don't be involved in their life. But make sure that from a parent point of view, your responsibility goes so far as to guide and direct to the point that eventually you'll be able to remove yourself and they'll be able to continue on their own as they mature. So my next point is exactly that. It's to release them and let go. And that might take... For some of them in grade 8, 3 months, 6 months. For some of them in grade 8, it might take 2 years. But nonetheless, your objective must be that slowly but surely, you keep the boundaries in place, but slowly but surely, you release them and you let them go. We are strict with deadlines at the school. If something is set, it's set. There will be penalties involved if your children don't meet deadlines. Likewise, at home, if you're setting deadlines, or if you see the deadlines they have, or tests that are coming up, and so on and so forth, then please would you assist them to make sure they meet their deadlines. Be strict with your children around deadlines, both from a school perspective, but also from a social perspective, as it is really healthy. One day you don't want your child arriving to work 45 minutes to an hour late because deadlines mean nothing to them. Communication, as I've mentioned earlier, there are channels of communication. And please, if I can always, if I can say to you, there are always two sides to a story. So if your child comes home aggrieved about some situation that's taken place at school, I'm not for a moment saying they're lying to you, not at all, but they, they are giving you the story from their perspective. 
and I'm sure most of you will realize there's another perspective, and probably somewhere in between is actually the truth. But nonetheless, please, you're their number one supporter, you've got to listen to them, and if there are areas that are of concern to you, please feel free to use our channels of communication and chat to us. We are there for you. You and us are on the same page in that we want to see your child turn into the best version of themselves. So please just, just understand we are here for them and here for you, but realize that not everything they might come home with might be 100% the, the, the correct truth. And my last one, please, we're not looking for helicopter parents. I'm not looking for pilots out there. I'm not looking for people who sit in the car park and, and swap information. And the information is not always quite factual or true. So please, if you have any queries, feel free to contact the relevant person or myself, and we'll obviously set you straight. But please, we're not looking for helicopter parents or pilots. Um, and so please understand and respect that as, as you move into the school. So that's me down on my section. And we're going to be handing over shortly to the next person. And again, I would really like to say welcome. Welcome to our Cura Hillcrest family. We are super excited to have you and your children with us. Let's enjoy the next few years together. Thank you. Good evening, grade 8s and grade 8 parents. My name is Terry Dennis, and I'm the Head of Academics at Curra Hillcrest. It is my delight to welcome you to Curra Hillcrest and to present to you this evening a few of the topics which will be essential for you to know when you get here. Our academic subjects are split into core subjects and semesterized subjects. The core subjects are the traditional subjects of English, Maths, Life Orientation and First Additional Language. First Additional Language is your choice of either Afrikaans or Isisu. Furthermore, at Caro Hillcrest we have a core subject called Technology which will run all year round. Technology is divided into EGD, which is actually a semesterized subject, it's divided into robotics, and it's divided into computers. So there are three children's subjects to the mother subject of technology. The other semesterized subjects that we have are geography and history, which are semesterized against each other. So learners will take geography for six months and then history for six months. Similarly, with physical sciences and life sciences, Again, for the creative arts subjects, visual arts and dramatic arts. And then robotics and accounting are semesterized against one another. In grade eight, learners who take semesterized subjects will write an exam at the end of the second term. It is more like an extended assessment than a junior exam. And these marks will compare with the end of year exam that is taken in the sister subject. Class allocations. Learners at Curra Hillcrest are divided into two different classes. One is a connect class, which is like a form class or a registration class, and the other one is an academic class. So let's cover the connect class first. The connect class, which is like a registration class, is where learners from different grades and academic backgrounds are connected within a smaller group with a facilitating connect teacher which means that in one registration class called the Connect class, you're going to have a certain number of grade 8 learners, grade 9 learners, grade 10 learners, 11 learners, and grade 12 learners. This is essentially going to help learners who are getting used to the structures of the school and has a big brother effect, where there can be mentorship not just from the teacher, but also from their peers. The second class that a learner is placed into is an academic class. In each of our grades, particularly grade 8, we have streamed classes in 8.1 and 8.2. Classes Learners are streamed into these classes based on their English and on their maths results. This mark will come from the report, which is what we get from the feeder schools and you've been asked to send in to us, and then also based on the placement tests which the grade 8s will write during the course of this week. Those marks will be collated this weekend, and by the time Monday morning comes around, your child would have been placed into an academic class. The next thing I'm going to talk to you about is cashless transactions at our school, which um, is not really part of the academic structure, but it is important for you to know that during the course of next week, or this week, your child will come home with a tap-tap card. A tap-tap card is a card, very much like a debit card, which you as a family can load with money and the learner can use and your child can use it at the tuck shop and ultimately during the course of the year as and when your child is going to need to pay for civvies or pay for um, 
photocopying in the cognition center, they will use their tap tap card so that money does not transfer from hand to hand. The last thing I'm going to talk to you about is our virtual library. Our virtual library, the one that we belong to, is Snapify. So the way that the virtual library is going to work is that you will be encouraged and you will be hearing from Mrs. Galvin to download the Snapify app onto your device. So once you're at school during the course of this week, your devices will have certificates attached to them by any of the teachers who are working with you during that session. Once those certificates are attached and they are effectively a colorized device, which means they can engage in our network, you will be asked to download the Snapify app and this is available from Play Store. Once you've got the Snapify app, should there be any book that you would like to take out as a loan book, we have several loan books which are already available on the Snapify library, otherwise you're going to make contact with Mrs. Galvin should you want a book purchased. Now the book that's purchased should not be a textbook, it should be a book that is of literary merit and something that many people in the school can take out at um, any given time during the year. So Mrs. Galvin um, is the one who will be working with Snapify and you will make direct contact with her. Thank you very much for listening to me for the past couple of minutes. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye but pass over to Mr. Micklebrough, who will be discussing with you discipline and pastoral care. Good evening, parents and learners. My name is Mr. Mick, um, or Mr. Micklebrough. The learners call me Mr. Mick. And I'm the head of discipline and pastoral care at Coro Hill Crest. And I just want to briefly give you some, um, some information around the discipline and pastoral care of Curry Hill Crest. So in terms of the ethos of our discipline, we are a school um, that focuses on positive discipline. This is obviously completely different to the more old school or authoritarian type of discipline approach, which focuses on what behaviors not to do, where we focus on the behavior that we want to get out of our learners. Learners that will produce solid and upstanding um, citizens of, of this country. And so even in our, any kind of discipline or consequence measures, our focus is on where we want to go with your child from a discipline point of view. Um, in terms of the documents um, that we work with, um, we have two. The first one is the Curra Code of Conduct, which you can pick up on Google. If you type in Curra Code of Conduct, you will quickly be, um, uh, be sent to the documents on Google. Please, at some stage, uh, read through that. But what you need to know in a nutshell is that the Curra Code of Conduct is, uh, um, is behavior that's more geared towards constitutionally illegal behavior. Um, and so whenever a learner, um, whenever a learner's behavior goes to that extent, that is the document under which we will uh, conduct all our investigation and all the, the procedures that we will, we will follow. Um, from a school specific point of view, we have what we call a window of safety that was drafted right in the beginning by our first body of parents and learners as well as teachers um, in the, at the inception of our high school. So we've had all stakeholders actually have an opportunity to, to speak into that document. Um, and that document outlines the, the general guidelines of, and behaviors we expect of learners at Curro Hillcrest. This includes just your, your behavior in the classroom, on the sports field, things like being on time, project completion, homework, etc., etc., as well as your, your appearance. So your general appearance on the school premises as well as off the school premises. In the window of safety, you will also find um, our, our merit and demerit system, which involves green and blue slips for merits and yellow and red slips for demerits. Please read the window of safety at your soonest convenience to get familiar with the way we do things or the way we conduct discipline at our school. Um, there are rewards for the learners who, um, who receive blue and green slips for positive behavior and obviously a desired set of consequences, uh, positive consequences for the learners who, um, who, who, who short for. On that note, I want to just elaborate on a couple of things. Uh, when the learners come back to school on Wednesday. For the girls, I want to just mention the following three things, and I mentioned this on behalf of Mrs. Bester, who's the Dean of Girls, that the girls' skirts may be no longer than 10, 10 centimeters when kneeling on the ground, that earrings may be worn, but only one earring may be worn, um, and it must be situated on the earlobe. If a learner has two, um, if a girl has two um, holes, the uh, the earring must be in the lower of the of the two and then lastly 
no and no coloring of nails so no gel no nail varnish may be worn at any stage and uh, nails must be natural looking at all times and must be um, and manicured accordingly so in terms of boys these are the things that I would like the boys to make sure they focus on when they come to school on Wednesday and that is a uh, their hair um, and that includes shaving so please make so, sure that uh, uh, but, but by the way both boys and girls that your hair is a natural color but boys specifically please make sure that your hair is no shorter than two centimeters no longer than six centimeters and your hairstyle is not eccentric in other words there's no steps or comb overs or mohawks or anything like that in other words no Justin Bieber types of hairstyles um, so those are the, the, the few things I wanted to mention um, look, but just before um, I finish there boys please make sure as well that you're clean shaven and that your uh, sideburns are no longer than halfway uh, half of your, your ear length right so those are that's pretty much um, summing up the discipline uh, in a nutshell Again, please go read those documents and don't hesitate to email me if you have any questions. Lastly, I'm excited to announce that we have a new uh, counseling psychologist, by the way, of Mrs. Uh, Sne or Ms. Snea Makatini, who's uh, joined us this year. And she's had extensive um, opportunity to connect with learners over her career or, or young or the youth over her career. And so she's got great experience with the youth. And we know that she's going to make a valuable contribu contribution to the learners at the school who are going to need her guidance and her counselling uh, going forward. And always please remember that um, there are many members of staff here who are equipped from, as from a lay counsellor's point of view. If your learners would like to connect with them, they may. They may. And uh, we encourage learners to develop relationships um, with their teachers so that they can have those, um, uh, those chats when and if they, the need um, arises. But we do have a really fantastic lady on our campus who would love to connect with, with learners who do need that counselling. Thank you very much for listening to me and I hope we have a great start to the year and I hope your learners love being on our campus. Bye. Good evening. I'm Petri Mustard, Head of Academic Administration and Policies. At Kira Hillcrest, we strive to become a 21st century learning centre of excellence. To that effect, every learner in the school has to have a device on them at all times, as we use these devices to enhance our teaching in the classroom, as well as to give our learners a chance to experiment with technology which will enhance their academic endeavors at home. Our technology team is standing by at school to assist with the installation of any of the required software should the need arise. Please encourage your learners to bring their devices to school on a daily basis as we use these devices in every class. As we are a Microsoft aligned institution, we use Microsoft Teams as our platform of choice. We look forward to introducing your child to this technology in order for them to gain the full advantage of a 21st century learning environment at Kira Hillcrest. Good evening, my name is Chanel Bester and I would just quickly like to give you an introduction to our leadership model, which is quite unique and different. We focus mainly on servant leadership and therefore our model is very inclusive. Every single learner needs to be exposed to some kind of program where they can develop their leadership. When the grade gates come in, they'll be introduced to our custodians. It's not prefix, we've changed the name recently. And custodian has a whole meaning behind it which we'll unpack with the learners once they arrive. These three matric learners are mainly in charge of portfolios, which is, for example, culture or sport, and they oversee alongside teacher these different spheres and portfolios, if I can call it that. Then secondly, we also have RCL, which is Representative Council of Learners. They are grade 8s all the way up to grade 12s, and from each class, there is a boy and a girl voted for each semester, so every six months we change that over, and they just get the opportunity to lead the class in various ways, administrative and at the same time also just taking some initiative and responsibilities. So that is it in a nutshell. Um, I'm sure that the grade eights will get a lot more info when they meet the custodians face to face this week. Have a great evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hile Pasma and I head up culture at Cura Hillcrest. So, Crisis breeds creativity, and for this reason, the cultural department will be as busy as ever. Even though we've had to revise our cultural program for the first term, 
We have a multitude of activities, performances, exhibitions and platforms for learners to really showcase their talents and creative skills. Our term one cultural activities include marimba, unfortunately the auditions have closed, but please see Mr. Mustard if you have any restraints about this, choir with an audition date to be announced, debating, art club and photography club. Now, our photography club also makes part of our service committees. There are a multitude of service committees where learners can serve the school and earn points and through this receive colours. Other service committees include the audiovisual team, the catering committee, and then finally the new and exciting media team. Our learners can look forward to the following cultural events this term. Firstly, the Art at Cultural Kersney Art Exhibition followed by our inaugural inter-house music and dance competition. More details about this to follow. And then finally, the Cure Create Art Superhero Competition. Now let's unpack these two terms, Cure Create and CAS. Cure Create is the creative engine within our group of Cure schools. Cure Create helps learners develop their creative skills to its full potential. Powered by Henny van Grenen and Pedro Kruger from the Wordsmith Theatre Factory, various platforms, productions and workshops help our learners discover and develop their creativity in a wide range of disciplines. The Curo Art Superhero, or CAS as we call it, is the first of the annual national events in the Curo Create calendar. Think of CAS as a type of 21st century I Stedford where absolutely anything goes from knitting, knife and blade making, game and world building to your traditional singing, dancing and musical performances. Again, absolutely anything creative goes. On top of that, learners do not perform in front of an audience but they are rather mentored after their performance by the professional adjudicator. Entries for CAS open on the 20th of January and close on the 26th of March. But learners and parents, please note, the performance, art, whatever your child is entering does not need to be completed and ready at this time. We simply need your numbers and entries. And that's all you need to know from my side at this time. I leave you with the 2020 CAS hype video. Enjoy. bathrooms for me in this building. sport and I'd just like to run through some things just to put you in the, the know of what and how sport happens and what the requirements are. Um, the sports department runs a very very busy extramural uh, program with many offerings um, for your children and um, the extramurals are compulsory uh, for everyone whether it be sport or culture and we encourage all learners to participate in our sports program. Communication is done via our various communication channels, Teams, which is used for our staff and learners. This lets them know through our network at school on what and when sport is actually taking place, and when it, especially when it comes to fixtures, uh, where they're playing, what time they're leaving, etc. The D6 is for your parents. Um, we obviously load uh, the extramural program on there for you, so you can actually go and have a look at it and see what days your children are playing. Um, matches obviously be relayed to you as and when they do occur. And then our coaches and managers as well, um, they play a vital role in actually informing the learners, your children, um, of the fixtures that are to take place. And then we have notice boards for both the sport and culture that get uh, displayed for them prior to the fixtures taking place. And I said we offer various, and we've got a very busy extramural program, um, we offer various sports in each term. Um, 
practices will basically commence straight away now from Wednesday and um, it's very under a very strict COVID protocols obviously you might be a bit worried about that but we do have a very strict line that we follow and obviously safety of all the learners and the staff and coaches is very important to us so no fear for that um, term one sports that we have available are boys we have cricket water polo basketball and swimming and then for the girls is cheerleading netball water polo tennis and swimming obviously as well our pre-season would obviously start halfway through the term which is basically your rugby your outdoor hockey which are big sports for uh, term two and then cross country as well um, as i said these will start mid-term sport kit requirements these are loaded onto the d6 for your information and should you have any further queries please don't hesitate to contact me uh, you can get hold of me at the sports office or via my email warren.p at puro.co.za thank you and welcome to the family Good evening new parents and particularly to the grade 8 parents and any learners that might be joining us tonight for this meeting. My name is Hannah Fletcher and I am one of the two grade heads that will be looking after the grade 8s for the 2021 academic year. We are so excited to have um, your sons and your daughters joining us in the coming days. We are really looking forward to getting to know them and having a really wonderful couple of days with them. Our orientation program is going to run over the three days, um, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday and we're really just going to have a great time of getting to know um, one another and hopefully having a very informative couple of days for the grade eights where they get to hopefully get a feel for what school is about um, uh, as they start to navigate their high school career. Um, it's going to be small groups that are going to be run and we are going to be having lots of fun um, no initiation taking place at all in these couple of days, but just simple enjoyment um, and information being hopefully fed through to each one of you. On Wednesday and Thursday, we are going to be running placement tests. On Wednesday, we will be doing an English placement test, and on Thursday, we will be doing a maths placement test. These will be one hour long each, and these are just going to be baseline assessments that we're going to use to see where your sons and daughters are at in terms of their academics, and we're going to be using the information from these assessments to um, get a feel for which academic class they would be best um, fit into. This will also run alongside any uh, the information that you guys sent through from the reports and from the marks that they received from their end of year reports last year. In terms of what we would like each of uh, your learners to come to school in for the three days, um, on Wednesday we ask that they please come to school in their full school uniform. There's no need for their blazers. Um, we are going to be taking each learner's picture, so we would like them to be in their full school uniform. On Thursday, we ask that they come in their house shirts and their PE kits, and then on Friday, they can just come in their regular PE kit, um, the full PE kit, shirt and shorts. On Thursday, we ask that they also bring in their devices, as we are going to be using the time during the day to set them up in preparation for um, getting them accessed onto Microsoft Teams as well as onto, their, um, onto the school Wi-Fi. There is no need for cell phones at all for the three days, um, so please remind your learners to keep their cell phones at home for those days. Again, really looking forward to meeting each and every one of you as well as your learners, and thank you so much. Good evening everyone, my name is Nathan Spavens, and I came from the Karahilkus Primary School. Now, grade 7 and grade 8 are completely different things. In grade 7, you're the biggest fish in the pond, and you're probably bossing everyone around. And then you go to grade 8, and you become the smallest fish in the pond, and everyone's bossing you around. Now, you probably think everyone's treating you like babies. And you and your fellow grade 8s have a special connection like that. And you can just talk about school, teachers, homework, in whatever way you want and you can feel happy because you're expressing your feelings and that's how you can make good friends and even though 2020 wasn't the best of years we still kept each other safe by going online and we still kept in touch not just through school but also by messaging people on teams and calling them and now when you go to the blazer ceremony and you put on that blazer after the first term you get that special feeling of acceptance and a sense of belonging to Curry. Thank you. Good day, parents, staff, and our future grade eights. Welcome. 
I'm Yanae Lewis and I'm a grade 9 learner at Kero School. I'm honoured to be given this opportunity to share a little of my experiences and my journey at Kero School. Kero's value system is made out of four pillars, from positive discipline to creative thinking. Their high school environment carries the weight of turning kids into young adults. Kero in Latin means I run. It is interpreted as I learn at my own learning pace and according to my own aptitude, attitude and talents. As we all know, 2020 was not the best year. It came with a lot of challenges, but that did not stop Kira from making our grade eights of 2020 feel welcome and at home. From our orientation camp, planting our plants, to finally ringing the bell, Kira stood by us not as a school, but as a family. In the lockdown, due to COVID-19, we did online schooling. The teachers were supportive and went out of their way to make us feel important and made sure that we were adapting. Coming from Afrikaans to English school, I thought it would be terrifying and difficult, but the staff made sure that I was equipped and ready for my high school career. Having a connect group, helped us interact and support other grades. One of my favorite memories before lockdown was at Intel Scala, where we all came together and supported our teammates swimming. Kiro definitely has Gias. Responsibility, self-motivation, self-discipline, and independence are just some of the things that the Kiro environment assisted me in growing. I am so thankful that I can be part of this prestigious school and I'm so excited for the journey ahead. Remember that the future belongs to those who believes in the beauty of their dreams. Grade 8, welcome to the Kiro family. Each lesson is a stepping stone on the journey that leads to success. Enjoy every moment and I can't wait to meet you all. Thank you.